time of numismatic transition. An Indian vinet of myth from an assessed history of possibilities. After the emperor's head has been chopped off, the royal executioner is paid his wages by his new masters. Till new currency is struck, the ancient regimes will have to do. He opens his purse and takes out a mohar, a golden guinea, with the decapitated royal bust on the obverse, and the other face emblazoned with the legend, Emperor of the World, Scion of the Solar Dynasts, Shadow of God on Earth, He whose reign is eternal. He tosses the coin, perhaps to test his own fate. Heads, it is. The perimeters of immortality. Animate as we are, each walking, the perimeters of immortality shall meet again on that eternal road. Byok Namkung, grass. Dark velvet of the evening sky is silver filigreed by lightning. The coming summer storm colors the air imprisoning it in a white mesh of static. In the blue turbid gloom of tropical twilight, the monsoon is poised on gossamer. The park is surreal with shadows. A path snakes its way, then slouches itself off into the grass. I walk along the perimeters of immortality into wind, the gathering rain. The Golden Deer. Could you ever imagine a country as beautiful, a wilderness lovelier than this? In its soil at the roots of a forest, Dandakaranya. Dream green, dream dark. Its silence braided by the music in the silver blonde plates of virgin waterfalls. There a demon from Serendip. Disguised as a golden stag, darts in and out of the corners of your eyes. A fleeting flash of glitter which steals away what desire cannot attain. Elusive as the wind, fleeing with the sunshine, it leads you away from yourself the more you chase it through foliage and undergrowth. It is still said that if you see the golden deer even once, you are condemned to seek it for the rest of your life and never find it. Though you may catch glimpses of it now and then, a fleeting flash of glitter, antlers of gold that snare the sun. From a legend in the Hindu epic Ramayan. Touche, corner cafe, gossip and rumours swirl around the edges, doubled in rainbow lights, eddying around the feet of harried waiters. Even so, but then, aha, softly lapping at the toes of tables and chairs. Napkins swipe up the crumbs of unfinished sentences. Pauses rotate in Brownian motion on Café Aulé. At places the conversation bubbles up and sparkles as the champagne fizzes over. Over a plate of noodles to old women fence with raised chopsticks. Ikebana of the Blind This poem won the first prize in the Dorothy Sargent Rosenberg Memorial Poetry Competition 2007. He picks up vowels and consonants, shape and form as the subject of his fingers, dexterous and facile, exploring the impossible fragrances of jasmine and lily. He starts with the white nouns, the basic folds in his alphabet. Then come the verbs, rustling in blue pleats, and the adjectives forming themselves into pink creases. Working with his second sight of crisp movements, 
the grammar of touch and feel, harmonizes textures into rhythm with his color schemes of thoughts, perfumed with imagination's pollen. Stretching a point too far, on a flat sheet he crinkles compound curves out of its locus. Spiral gerundives of yellow, vertexes twisted gently into cutting edges, visualized in the blackness of permanent night, into cascades of flowers, buds and blooms of rose, lotus, gladiolus. In his hands blossomed the ritual, petals of inflections and hyperboles, curving branches, scattered leaves, patterning and illusion of foliage. Wild flowers captured manifold in squeeze and press, squash and push. Saburo Kase's nostrils still tingle with the blossoms he had smelt as a child on the mountains near his home when vision was not yet lost. Now it is origami's paper magic that passes down his constructions, that eternizes them into immortals in his fingers' vernacular. Living in the moment, still center of the now, an old man, always in the dark but never without light, his hands always redolent of beauty. Saburo Kase, born in 1926, one of the world's greatest origami artists. Vaitarani. In Hindu mythology, this is a river of gore infested by crocodiles, which the souls of the dead have to cross before they reach hell. Corpses on the river bank dip their hands into silences and come up with the hymns of crackling flames. An unmitigated thirst of memories burns in sandalwood and incense on the funeral pious tact in Calcutta's darkened alley. Like tears wept by the living, the dregs of past lives gather in their violet throats of dusk. This then is the Ecolalia of ghosts. What is this that has been left behind that death still can't reduce to ashes? What is it that is forgotten and chants sterile passwords into the detritus of shadows abandoned by lost voices? Here too is a river to be forded before they can return home, even if it is only the smoky traffic flowing through crematorium street.